and that's what we're celebrating, the two Advents, his coming 2,000 years ago and his coming again, his second coming. Three kinds of circumstances will precede the last judgment. Terrible signs, the imposture of the Antichrist, and an immense fire on the earth. This is straight from Scripture, beloved. Five types of signs will precede the last judgment. For as St. Luke says, there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. We can find a commentary on all these things in the Apocalypse, in the book of Revelation. The last judgment will be preceded by imposture, the imposture of the Antichrist, who will try to deceive men in four ways. First, by a false interpretation of the scripture, trying to prove that he is the promised Messiah. Second, by the working of miracles. Third, by the distribution of gifts. And fourth, by the infliction of tortures. The last judgment will be preceded by a violent fire. This is all in scripture, beloved. Lit by God himself to renew the world to punish the reprobate, and to bring attention to the group of the elect. Regarding the circumstances that will accompany the last judgment, the first to be named is the separation of the good from the evil ones. For it is known that the judge will come in the valley of Jehoshaphat and place the good at his right and evil ones at his left. This does not signify as St. Jerome observes, that all men will have to be in that small valley, but only that it will be the center of the judgment. (laughs) Next comes the question of knowing the categories into which men will be divided when the final judgment comes. St. Gregory admits four categories, two for the reprobates and two for the elect. The reprobates will be those who will be condemned and those who were already condemned, about whom it was said, quote, the one who does not believe will be judged previously. Among the elect will be those who will judge the others sitting alongside the judge. The judge will be inflexibly severe. He will bend neither from fear, since he is almighty, nor from gifts, because he is richness himself, nor from hatred, because he is goodness itself, nor from love, because he is justice himself, itself, nor from error, because he is wisdom itself. Against this wisdom, neither the allegations of lawyers, nor the phrases of orators, nor the ruses of hypocrites will prevail. The judge will be as severe as the prosecutor will be implacable. In other words, the sinner will face three prosecutors, the devil, sin, and the entire world. Because as St. Chrysostom says on that day, sky and earth, water, sun, and moon, day and night, the whole world will raise against us before God in testimony of our sins. Three witnesses will also testify against us, all three infallible. First, God, who said to us through the voice of Jeremy, Jeremiah, I am the same time. I am at the same time judge and witness. Second, our conscience. And third, our guardian angel. For we read in the book of Job, heavens, that is the angels, will reveal this iniquity. Finally, the sentence will be irrevocable. Indeed, the sentence is irrevocable for three reasons. The excellence of the judge, the evidence of the crime, the impossibility of reversing the chastisement. For in the sentence pronounced against us, in the last judgment, there will be no king, emperor, or pope to whom we can appeal the judgment pronounced against us. This can be very frightening to those who are away from God, to those who are unsure of where they stand before God, and to those who deny God. And uh, the Gospel of Mark 
uh, St. Mark says, but of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. There are many, many, many verses in Scripture that back up what we just read, and we'll never be able to go through them all. So, dear ones, if you're away from God and your family has tried to help you to know Christ, to help you to know his laws, his standards, his kingdom, and you've rejected the scriptures say, if today you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. You still have a chance while there is time. We don't know how much time, but while there is time, you can repent. John writes, children, it is the last hour, and just as you heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have appeared. From this we know that it is the last hour. Um, we are heading into very, very awful times. And the only thing, number one for you to do, is turn to Christ with all your heart to be saved. And then save your families, protect them, get them out of the schools. Uh, Public schools for sure, many Catholic schools. Save yourselves and your children. We'll be right back after the break. 